Good evening and welcome to Southbridge Town Council meeting of Monday, April 22nd, 2019. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilor Adams. <laughs> Present. Councilor Daniel. Present. Councilor DePietro. Absent right now. Councilor Jovan. Present. Councilor Mana. Present. Councilor Nash. Present. Councilor Steves. Present. Okay, we do have a quorum. Item three, consider and accept the town council minutes of Monday, April 8th, 2019. So moved. Second. Any errors, corrections? Council Mana? I will be abstaining from that. I wasn't here. Thank you. Likewise. Anybody else? Say none. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Two abstentions. Thank you. Consider and accept the council of the whole minutes of Monday, April 1st, 2019. Fair motion? So moved. Second. There yeah. is corrections and missions. Council Steves. The second page, that first, that really big paragraph there, um, I just wanted to point out, kind of clarify a little bit here where the sentence starts with he referenced meeting minutes. It, it should be from July 2017. I think it just says July. Um, I think it was 2017. What, what the, paragraph was that? It's the really big paragraph in the middle of the page there. At the sentence that starts, he referenced meeting minutes from July 2017. Okay. Um, that it added an agenda item after the executive session prior to the session. And just to clarify, because that phrasing is really weird. So I'd like, to, like that to read the agenda listed items after executive session for votes, but, also cited, but I also cited other agendas that did not while their minutes included post-executive session votes. Do you, can you get that to her? I can. You okay. get that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a couple of other, other minor things in here. Okay. I also stated there that, 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 the, that the chairman's declarations need to be clearly stated in the minutes, which isn't really clearly stated in there. Um, on the third, par third full paragraph on the next page, it's just a weird phrasing here that that second, that Councillor Steve said the Attorney General's office has made governing bodies revote on some occasions, but he doesn't know. Just missing a word there. Councillor Manna should be capitalized farther down in that paragraph. Uh, and and uh, the first full paragraph on chapter f on page five, Councillor Steve suggested putting. It says the resigning of the contract. It really should be signing of a new contract because we aren't. It's not. It's not the old contract. It's a new contract. So, other than that, that was it. Any further corrections? Councilor Daniel? Yes, please. On uh, page four in the first paragraph, um, the very last sentence is a sentence fragment concerned it wasn't on the original agenda. I don't even recall that or know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want done with that? I, could I delete that? Oh, what's that? Could I delete that? Delete it? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not sure what it What are we deleting? Uh, where it says concern it wasn't on the original agenda. Concerned. Yeah, on that paragraph. That last sentence. Just We're sentence not sure and what that it's in, what that reflects to. Oh, okay. 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 All right. <clears throat> Anything further? On yes, Council Jane. On uh, page five, the third paragraph, the first sentence, the response draft to the will include the following points. Oh what, right. Yeah. What's there? Should be the response to the complaint. To the response? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Anything further? All those in favor as amended? Opposed? Unanimous spell present. Thank you. Subcommittee reports General Government Council of Steves. Um, we did have a meeting, a fairly lengthy one, on the budget. Um, I have not had a chance to finish off the minutes yet, um, but that was back on uh, a week and a half ago or so. And so there's a whole bunch of other budget, I, budget meetings coming up. I do, not, I do have one also scheduled for the 23rd? 29th. 29th, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have one scheduled for the 29th also. A couple of, couple of short items. That shouldn't be too long. That's at 6.30 on Monday. Thanks. Thanks. Department of Public Works, Council DePietro, he's not here this evening. However, there was a meeting held uh, last week. There's a couple items on the agenda uh, tonight. Education and Human Services, Council Daniel. Thank you, Chairman Jovan. Oh, sorry, if I may. There is a meeting scheduled for DPW on April 30th, 2019. Council Daniel, EHS. 
Um, we have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow night at 6.30. We'll be discussing the health, veterans, community center, recreation, library, and unclassified budgets. We also have a meeting tentatively scheduled for the very late April or early May for the uh, school budget. That's all I have. Thank you. Plan development, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, we had a meeting on the 11th of April. Uh, agenda items number 10 and 13 are on here for this evening to discuss further. Also, we have a meeting tomorrow evening, uh, 23rd of April, at 6 o'clock to discuss plan development uh, budget. That's Thank all I have. Protection of persons and property, Council Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, there is a meeting. Um, on Thursday, April 25th, and this is for the budget. I think I scheduled it for 6.30. I'm not sure. See, 6.30 or 7. I apologize. Oh, I you have it at 7? 7? Okay. Yeah. That's at 7 o'clock then. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Chairman's announcements, a couple. I'd uh, like to congratulate two young men for their Eagle Scout that the uh, several of councils attended. Eagle Scout Jeremy Peters and Eagle Scout Joshua Martin. Um, for the local troop, uh, it was a great event, and uh, congratulations to them. Uh, town bylaw committee, we had mentioned this several times, nobody has stepped up for this town bylaw committee, so I, I guess we'll recommend Council Steve's maybe in general government would discuss how to proceed okay. with uh, reviewing of the town bylaw since we don't have a committee. Uh, we should take a look at how we want to proceed, uh, given the fact that nobody has stepped forward for that committee. So we'll take that up in general government and discuss it as a council on how we want to go forward. Um, <clears throat> last week I did meet uh, with the town manager and um, town clerk regarding the United States Census. Um, a, lady, a woman came in from uh, the United States Census. Uh, they were partnership specialists. As everyone is aware, the two 2020 census will be taking place uh, beginning at the, uh, uh, in somewhere around March of uh, 2020. They're looking for, uh, they're going to several different towns, especially towns that are challenged in their count counting of individuals for the census. And they've identified as Southbridge as a community which is difficult to count. Uh, and as such, <clears throat> this could have implications as to money that could come to the town via federal dollars. It's estimated by what, her, what she told us, <clears throat> for every individual that we lose an account, it could potentially be $2,400 per year of federal dollars. So as you can see, a hundred less mm -hmm. count, that's a quarter of a million dollars over every year of 10 years, we're talking millions to billions of dollars. So <clears throat> what they're doing is they're re outreaching to communities and asking us <clears throat> Uh, to see if we would be willing to be a partner uh, with the census and perhaps uh, develop a, uh, a committee of local leaders, um, uh, maybe <clears throat> some in the clergy, uh, some uh, business partnerships, to see about uh, outreach for uh, getting the count correct. So they were looking at an event that we may have that they may be able to uh, give us some uh, grant monies for to supplement. Also, we may take a look at, um, uh, they have a grant program where uh, through the Census Equity Fund out of Boston, uh, we could petition if we local, uh, partner with a local nonprofit group and uh, perhaps assist an account and go into the senior centers, uh, maybe the YMCA, uh, wherever we can outreach and uh, we could potentially apply for this grant money. Uh, say we go out and we say we want half a dozen tablets uh, in the grant. Uh, so whatever that nonprofit gets the tablets and then you set up these days to do the count, then whatever equipment is then the towns. So we'll be talking uh, in the near future about setting up some kind of group and maybe getting some uh, individuals to step up to help with that. It was a pretty uh, informative meeting. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank them for inviting me to that. Um, there was no doubt when she pre presented the map of the challenged areas, it's, it just fits with what we know occurs in town. So look forward to that. Um, um, Jack, do you have yes. that information in an electronic form you can send us? I don't. I, I can uh, reach out to her, ask her if she could send it in electronic form great, and get that to you. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I have this evening. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of quick <coughs> announcements. One is that 
Uh, like people now, the time where we're mowing grass uh, shortly and cutting grass, uh, that you think about exactly how to deal with that issue. Um, there is a website for what is called Think Blue Massachusetts. And again, it's www.thinkbluemassachusetts.org. And it talks about uh, the importance of the types of fertilizer you use on your lawn, the importance of leaving your grass uh, clippings right and leaves right on the lawn after you, you know, uh, cut them up with a lawnmower. Um, you want to use leaves as mulch to boost soil health. Water once a week in the morning, no more than one inch. If you need to fertilize, use according to the package instructions. Know your state regulations limit use of phosphorus and nitrogen in lawn care. Don't mow wet grass. Keep equipment blades sharp. Adjust your mower to cut your grass two to three inches tall. Test the soil first to understand pH and fertilizer needs. So this is basically, it. you're going to be able to get this right off the website I told you about. But it basically, uh, there's no reason why you should have to bag up all your uh, existing black grass clippings and, and send them someplace. Uh, and you want to be careful of the fertilizer, particularly if you live near a lake or a pond or something where uh, fertilizers can be dangerous, dangerous to the fish and things that are in the water. Secondarily, I just want to bring the board's attention. Last year during uh, free cash, we put some money aside to fix up the basketball court at Henry Street. Uh, just before I left on vacation last week, I called the payment company. Uh, they told me that we're like first, or, well, second on their list of jobs this year. Uh, he was going to call and find out if the payment was ready. They, I guess they open up the facilities at certain times of the year, and he was going to call and let me know. I did not hear. Obviously, I was away last week, so I didn't hear her. Uh, Heather, I talked to Heather this morning about it to see if she had heard anything she had not. One of the things she has to do, or a couple of things she has to do, is to take down a part of the fence so they can move in their heavy equipment to put to do the paving work of the basketball court. But also we have some poles, basketball poles, that have to be put up as well. So she might have to get a contractor to, to be able to put those poles up in place. The goal here is to get it before basketball season. The kids are out of school. We'd like to have the course ready so that right after they get out for summer vacation, the court's ready. So that's our goal. Uh, we're going to be working on the company to do that. And Heather's uh, very engaged. We also have to, after we um, take down the fences, we have to power wash the basketball court one more time to get it prepared. So we're, we're going to be working with a contractor to get that all in place. Uh, and again, I think we really want to be in a situation where the kids can enjoy it this summer. And I'm going to let the town council know, well, maybe we can have some kind of grand opening kickoff to the new basketball court. I think it's important for the children in that area and it'll be a great opportunity for the, the town council members to meet some of the kids that are using that court and see what a truly wonderful benefit it is to the community. So I'll let you know so we can kind of time out something like that as well. And that's all I have to announce tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Presentations and swearing in, we have none. <clears throat> Citizens Forum, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the council? <coughs> Excuse me. Maureen Doyle, 771 Lebanon Hill Road in Southbridge. Um, happy Earth Day to everyone. Um, I have something to let you all know how you can extend the Earth Day, and it crosses cultural, ethnic, social, and geographic boundaries to teach greater awareness of our nation's natural resources. Um, um, it can be used by public and private education, homeschool, scouts, 4-H, nature camps to teach about wetland habitats and waterfowl conservation by combining arts, observation, and science. Um, its slogan is connecting youth with nature through science and art. It's the junior duck stamp. Um, so this program was started in 1991 by the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, and for more information for educators, including due dates, um, the entries must be submitted by February 15th. So we missed it for this year. Um, but people can try for next year. And there's um, activities throughout the year. Um, Presently, the top 100 pieces of art are on exhibit throughout the state, um, and the sites are listed on the website. Um, the closest location of the display will be at Norcross Wildlife Sanctuary in Wales, Mass., um, from October 15th to November 30th, 2019. So mark your calendar. Um, 
Um, so, oh, and the website is www. W, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, www.fws.gov slash junior duck. Um, no, spa uh, no spaces or caps or anything. Um, so I would encourage educators and artists to participate by helping young people see the exhibit and maybe contribute a piece. Um, happy Earth Day. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Seeing none, moving on. Vote to confirm the reappointment of Andrew Pelletier as the Director of Inspectoral Services for the three-year term effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? Second. Discussion? Mr. Town Manager. Yeah, just, just a quick comment. I mean, we all know uh, Mr. Pelletier <clears throat> has been our Health Agent Director of Inspectoral Services for some time. Uh, I think he's done an excellent job in this position. This is sort of a standard process for the reappointment period. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think that, you know, he's, his department in particular has gone through a lot with the changes in the landfill situation. And I'm very proud of the work that him and his department have done in this area. So I'm, I'm looking forward to continuously working with him over the next couple of years. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? You know, so all present. Vote to confirm the appointment of Ray Arnold to the Selfish Trails Committee effective immediately through June 30th, 2020 to fill a vacancy due to a member resignation. So Second. Discussion? Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, just briefly, uh, Ray was somebody who came before it's actually, I think, in a recommendation or after talking to at least one of the town council members. Uh, he's very committed to dealing with rail trails and trying to improve our trail system. Uh, a longtime resident of the town and uh, someone who uh, cares very much about the town. I had an opportunity to meet with him to talk about uh, the issues around the trails, and I think he's going to be a great asset to the board or the committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Adams. Hey, Mr. Chair, through you, I uh, just let you know that came in front of my subcommittee, 3 0. Thank you. Recommendation. I do note that he's already posted a lot of stuff on the trails on Facebook sure and has. stuff, yes, which, he is, has. which is great to see. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous all present. Item 11, just to announce. I'll be recusing myself from any vote because it does deal with the fire station building committee. So due to the fact that I am chairman of that, I won't participate in any vote, uh, but I'll just read the uh, agenda item if that might. Vote to authorize the transfer of 7,000 from council reserve account number 1.132.5781 to the fire station comprehensive study project number 6462 to complete cost estimating through Castle Bowles Associates for Elm Street current station proposal as well as potential central location. It's a motion. So move. Second. Okay. I'm mean, just going to move to the podium and I'll, I'll okay. answer any questions. And I'll, I'll take it. Okay. 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 Did you have so, just, just a comment. Obviously, yes, this is an important issue for the fire station building committee, uh, something I approve of and support. Uh, we need to continue to look forward. There, there's obviously a lot of concern about uh, where the uh, final site for the fire station is going to be. Mm -hmm. So we need to explore, explore all opportunities in a little bit more detail so that we can make the best uh, decision for the town of Southbridge. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you care to I, Can I just address the situation uh, here is before? Uh, the reason why we, we're doing this? Is yeah. that a question? I, no, I have a question. Uh, about that. Okay. About what? Okay. Oh, um. I don't know who I'm answering. <laughs> Council of Steve. I'm the chair. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. <clears throat> so um, I guess my question is we need a two thirds vote on this, roll call vote for this. Yeah, different agenda. Wait right. a minute. Oh, okay. Council item 11. Right, we do. There's no paperwork in here for item 11. Right, that's why I'm here to, right to address it. Okay. okay, so I apologize. Thank <laughs> okay. you. So. I I apologize for not having any backup material for this agenda item. We had tried to get through the uh, architect firm to um, at least have a quote uh, prepared. So the reason for this is on April 10th, the same night as Council Steve's general government meeting, unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, we had a fire station building committee in which uh, we had the architects come in and we, had, we discussed the feedback that occurred on the council meeting when the fire station building committee and Chief Hulick had made the presentation as to the Marsh Street location. As you're aware, and as several councils were concerned about that location as being a potential number one site, uh, we've had some further discussions uh, 
regarding uh, this, the location across the street on Elm Street at the existing fire station because there were a number of individuals that wished for us to go in that direction as well. The architect had brought forward uh, conceptual design for that building. However, uh, they had not really done a cost detail analysis of the true cost. The cost that they had presented earlier was basically just on a square footage uh, design. The conceptual design was to go with the number of bays that we had talked about. Um, also, the, they would have to utilize the basement in the fire station. And if anybody's been in the basement of the existing fire station, you'll see that there's a lot of water down there. And due to, this, to, the, to the condition of that, irregardless if they use that area for uh, actual f uh, footprint for activities, they would still have to do some remediation as to the water uh, and uh, dampness issues. The architect had uh, stated that they'd like to bring this to a cost estimator to get a, more, uh, a better cost estimate as to how much it would be if we did the renovation addition at the existing site. Uh, his estimate was that it was going to be a rough, approximately $2,800 to do that cost estimating. Further discussion was held as to other, another site. Uh, which was the third site in the recommended study potential, which was the Central Street location. Central Street across from the RMV. Uh, several individuals on the committee um, and, and the public were there and wanted us to take a look at if, in fact, that would be a feasible location for, a, for the fire station. Conversation with uh, Rosemary Scrivens down in the economic development, the planner, that isn't a target redevelopment area. In fact, uh, Chairman of the Redevelopment Authority, uh, Mr. Clements, had mentioned that to us a while back. Originally, we had indicated if we were just to put these, the, the, the project as it laid out lengthwise, it may not, it wouldn't fit. Uh, the architect has stated that through Castle Bowes that they will do a conceptual design at no additional cost to the town. So they will do a conceptual design for that, that area of Central Street that were, was in the target redevelopment area and do a design. They'd also like to do the cost estimating so that we have a cost estimate if we were to pick that as a, as a potential location. The estimate of that for cost estimating purposes was approximately $2,800 to $3,000 as well for that site. So the Fire Station Building Committee uh, made a motion to come to the council to ask for the additional money to do the cost estimating so that we could have a true cost across the street if we were to go with that location mm -hmm. and also take a look at that central street uh, building with a conceptual design. Mm -hmm. uh, the thought process was if they were going to do cost estimating on across the street, they could do the cost estimating on that central street design as well. So that was the reason why we, uh, when I talked mm -hmm. to the manager, we said not to exceed 7000 We don't think it's going to go to 7000 It'll probably go $2,800 each, but we wanted to get a little bit of leeway just in case um, uh, uh, we didn't have to come back and hold up the project. And we also said the, the plan was let's not just get the cost estimate across the street and just have them cost estimate that project and then come back and say, okay, here's the conceptual design for Central Street. We'll go do a cost estimate. Let's do right. it all at once, come back. Then mm -hmm. I think at that point, the Fire Station Building Committee will have three pretty good options of which they can come before council again and maybe have a public hearing and say, okay, here's three locations that we think will work. Obviously, the Marshall Street, we've gotten a lot of pushback on the Marshall Street location residential-wise. Um, so we just want to make sure that whatever we do, we have uh, good numbers mm -hmm. and uh, some conceptual plans for the council. So okay. that's where we're at. Thank you, Jack. Any questions? <coughs> Councilor Nash. Thank you through you to Mr. Joe Van. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the explanation. I, I guess I just would really like to be clear that these locations would come with a recommendation of the Fire Station Building Committee if we're spending money on cost estimates. At that point, I think we'd be prepared to 
make a final recommendation to council as to the preferred location for the fire station. So we're not considering any other possible locations that have been suggested? Uh, Informally, perhaps. I wasn't at the last meeting. Uh, informally? There was a mention of some area on Thomas Street. Mm -hmm. However, that's also in the floodplain area. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that, that's, we did have a discussion about Thomas Street because uh, somebody had brought that up. There was a, a section of area. Mm -hmm. We'd be taking a lot of properties for that, uh, but it is still in the floodplain area. <coughs> there was a conversation about, so to your point, yes, we did discuss other locations. Uh, across from uh, K Street, the American Optical Franklin Realty property, there was some mention that was brought up by, by a uh, resident, Mr. Murray, had brought it up. Um, however, um, Casey Burlingame, who was the president at that meeting as well, also indicated it's not deep enough because the rail trail is right there. Mm -hmm. But not only is the rail trail there, it's the Mass Electric uh, has easements for that. So we couldn't build anything back. So it, do it does not fit the, the, um, the site requirement that we would need for that. So, yeah, well, there was conversation about other potential locations. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately what I'm getting at is have we exhausted looking at any p possible other locations for a fire station to be I believe brought we have. to the committee? These, yeah, okay. these are, that's pretty much where we're at right now. These would be the top, these were the top three that came out of the feasibility study. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I think we were leaning towards that Marshall Street location, but given the feedback that we've, we, we've received from residents, mm -hmm. um, I think it behooves us to get a little better cost estimating across the street and a renovation mm -hmm. addition to that. Um, some people were on the conception uh, belief that, okay, you just tear down two bays and throw on a couple bays and you're done. No, it's, it's, it's more like, which we all know when we get into construction projects. Sure. But we have to make sure that we have all our homework done so that we can articulate that to the residents to make sure that they understand that and that we understand it as well. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, I do have one quick question then. Um, if, you, uh, if you're doing a cost analysis for those two sites, um, do you feel that the cost analysis for Marsh Ave is adequate enough, is adequate to go, go forward with at this point? Yes, that, that, that is. cost amount is, yeah, pretty well it is. Okay. Uh, detailed. Okay. Based on their square footage, based on their design work, um, and they have a pretty good track record of being within 1% of when they cost things. Okay. So that, that one is all costed out. When, when, when we asked them to take a look and throw in this across the street because mm -hmm. uh, people had asked us and we wanted right. to rule that out, they were basically doing a pretty much generic square footage, but until they started doing the conceptual design and, mm -hmm. and looking at, okay, the tower that's behind the building is here, right. we have to tear down this, now we have to take a look at the basement, mm -hmm. all that uh, work area. The other question that came up was, um, would we be opposed to moving some of the ancillary equipment and building a different building for that or taking mm -hmm. a look at that, which I don't think we're opposed to any suggestions right now, so we may have to take a look at that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, do you have a quick, a quick I know that the, uh, there was some quick estimates of the cost that we took for land takings for that property across the street. Yes. Is there any a rough guesstimate at this moment for land takings for the Central Street property? No. Not at the moment? No. Okay. No, because we didn't have the assessed value of that property and how many it would take. Mm -hmm. So I think until we take a look at how they would design that, is it just that one building directly across, or is there a couple other buildings on Central Street and how they design that until, we, until they can figure out whether it can even fit in there uh -huh. and how they would design it? Because, again, that design may be different as, right. as opposed to lengthwise it may have to go up. Okay. And then you throw in Central Street parking lot in the back. Is there a way they can design, mm -hmm. conceptually design that so that the entrance to any new station would come off of Central Street and they could uh, use that as a natural parking area for just, um, you know, visitor parking and then the regular parking for firefighters down below. So th I think that's why we're going to look at the cost estimating for all that. Okay. That makes sense. Thanks. Councilor Nash. Thank you. Just a quick question through you to the town manager, actually. What do we have available in council reserve? Is it $80,000 now? $50,000? I know some was put 
back in the council yeah. reserve as a result of the Bay Path thing. I'm not sure what the exact number. I, but I believe we're close to 100. But sufficient to cover there. sufficient yeah. to cover this. So it's not yeah. it's not an issue. We have mm -hmm. extra money left in, but I don't know the exact amount. But it's right. significant. 94, 95,000. Yeah, because we put the money back in the Bay Path, it's back up to. I mean, we originally start with 100 grand, as you know. We spent some down, but then the Bay Path money put it back. So it sounds like it's back up in the 90 area. Yeah. If I, if I could, you know, I did talk to Karen originally. We we're going to, we we're, uh, she thought about taking it from the uh, 15,000 that we had gotten back from Casella for the, for them not honoring the first uh, hazardous, waste. hazardous waste day. Mm -hmm. But then she said, at this point, given what's in the council reserve, she felt comfortable that, that there was enough in council <coughs> reserve for us to go to that route yep. at this time. Well, loaded question. I had ulterior motives because town manager and I had conversation about some other interest that I had with smaller dollar. Uh, it'd be nice to know that we have plenty of money in mm -hmm. council reserves. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? So we are, there's, uh, there was a motion on the floor and a second. Um, I'll, I'll, um, Again, I recused myself from right. the vote. Um, I, I think I'll do this as a roll call just because it's, because it's a transfer and it's from council reserve. Madam Secretary? <clears throat> Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Mano? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, this next vote will take a two thirds vote uh, on this. Vote, vote that in order to reduce interest cost on outstanding bonds of the town, there is, and I know this is awkward, Councilor Nash, and I did ask them if this was the correct wording, and sure. they said it was. <laughs> so, there is hereby authorized the refunding of all or any portion of the following outstanding bonds on, of the town, including the payment of any and all redemption premiums and associated costs of issuance, all as permitted by Chapter 44, Section 21A of the General Laws. The original issue date of July 8th, 2008, the outstanding amount of $2,190,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion, uh, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And yes, the, the language here is actually drafted by bond council, so it, it, it's accurate according to the law. Just so the council's understand and assistants who are watching this understand, is that uh, on different occasions throughout the years, the town goes out and actually issues bonds for large purchases or large, large projects that have to be done. <laughs> and the treasurer and collector working with the financial advisor for the town routinely reviews those bond purchases or those bonds, um, bond sales, I guess is a better way to say it, uh, reviews to make sure um, that we are paying appropriate interest rates. And as, as you know, just like when you finance a house, if interest rates go down, you can refinance and save money. Effectively, that's sort of an easy way to describe this, but it basically looking at refinancing um, our obligations in such a way as to save taxpayers money. Mm -hmm. This particular uh, agenda item before uh, you tonight will save the assistance of Southbridge over the next 10 years about $180,000. So uh, thank you to the treasurer collector and to our financial advisor for making this a routine part of their process to make sure, in fact, that we are, uh, when we borrow, we're doing it in such a way as that uh, we get uh, the best uh, interest rates possible over the long term. Any further discussion? One quick question. Uh, for, the sake of the, for the sake of the audience, can you give us a quick description of where this money, what, what, what bar this originally for? Was this okay, part of so this project? money, 90.8, uh, and I don't have the exact details of what in each fund, but the town essentially has three different funds. One is the general fund, which is the general uh, yes. town activities, all the department activities, general town activities. And then we have a couple of special funds, uh, water enterprise fund and sewer enterprise fund, uh, that we borrow for and that whenever you save money in that type of borrowing the money goes back into those accounts right. so that, that way your sewer water bill could in theory be reduced right. as well mm -hmm. so 90.8 percent was in the general fund budget uh, water enterprise fund was two percent and sewer enterprise fund 7.2 percent so the savings will break out in the same way back to each of those funds <clears throat> So just for clarification then, if it's 7.2 percent, it's going to um, the, you said the sewer fund? Sewer enterprise sewer, fund, okay. correct. So, that, so will that, what kind of a decrease will sewer, with well, sewer again, it's, you're only talking about 180,000 over 10 years. So it's a small 
reduction. It's not going to change the water or sewer rates or anything like that. Yeah. But in fact, whatever that is, even if it's $20,000, it's $20,000 less that they would have to get for the next year's budget. So it's a small reduction, but it's a, any anything, even a, you know, dollars in savings to taxpayers. So, but yeah, you're only looking at 7.2% of 180 grand and it's spread out over 10 years. So it's yeah, a small number. Not much, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> any further discussion? None. Roll call, Madam Secretary. <clears throat> Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 13, vote to authorize the town manager to seek legal advice related to the adult use marijuana, specifically adding adult use questions back on the ballot in order for people to vote at a future town election. So moved. Second. Discussion. Council Mana? Um, I guess I'm curious as to why he's um, going to be asking for the legal advice for the people who want to petition <clears throat> this back onto the um, the um, for the, the next town vote. Um, I don't support this. Um, the people spoke. The um, all the questions went up to the state. It, everything was approved by the state. Everything was put on the ballot according to the state, um, how the wording should be and everything. And um, it's not up to us to look for legal advice on something that people should have read and understood before they voted on it. So I am not going to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Adams? Councilor Nash. You're deferring to Council Nash? Yeah, okay, I'm deferring to Council Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, I agree with Councillor Manna. The people did spo spo uh, speak in November of 2016, and subsequently a second vote, a second bite of the apple, as has been said, did occur. Um, and the town manager did not ask for this. This actually went through subcommittee, which is now available on YouTube if you'd like to view it, um, for quite a lengthy discussion with private vendor and, um, and discussions with some other things going on in town. I will support this. I, I was not part of a petition drive this year, but I, I said it back in 2017 when I sought election. And while I'm not an advocate, I'm not a fan, I, I think that this bears revisiting. And I applaud those that have made the effort, um, even those that may not have been successful with their petition initiative. Uh, it was not a failure. It was a, a concerted effort that fell a little bit short due to some time constraints and maybe a few other things. I, I applaud the, the effort. It's not just about recreational use, it's about looking out for the future of this community. Um, and yeah, there's, there's semantics involved at, at some stages here, there's no doubt about it, but this deserves to be back on the ballot. I, I hope we get some legal advice that supports that. Thank you. Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. So just so everybody knows, it was voted 3-0 on the 11th of April at the PND, um, I requested, um, I actually invited Green Meadows to uh, give us a presentation on the State of the Union um, when it comes to recreational or adult use marijuana. I asked them for numbers, I asked them for uh, a lot of data, um, and they fulfilled that by coming and giving us a presentation. We had a pretty good crowd that showed up. We had those that were for and we had those that against. I will agree with uh, Councillor Nash. The, the people voted um, November 2016 for adult use. Matter of fact, the town of Southbridge, 58% of the registered voters came out and voted. 55% came out and voted for. 44.2% came out against. Now, that being said, that automatically put us in a category within the state to legalize adult use here in the town based on zoning bylaws as well that we had to figure out. A few months later, it was brought back up um, June of 2017 with specific wording. I'm in agreement with uh, another counselor of mine um, that though it was kind of confusing on some of the wording, if you read it and did your homework, you'd probably understand it a little bit better. Now. I am not a proponent of recreational use. I've said it multiple times. But when I debated, I also left it open to interpretation. Also, the fact that this town was solely based on one economy or one income 
uh, for our to say a majority of our we had a large amount of money coming from one organization. Mm -hmm. right. We did not diversify our, our economy after the AO left. Right. We got a landfill. Mm -hmm. And that landfill is now closed. AO is now gone. Mm -hmm. We need to be business friendly at the same time. <laughs> I've gone back and forth on this whole entire thing of should I, shouldn't I? Morals, integrity, values, all that kind of stuff. I know plenty of people have used it. I've been in support of medical, medical use marijuana. Um, listening to the petitioners uh, that were putting the initiative together here a few months ago, listening to townspeople um, since I ran and was elected. I thought long and hard. I did pros and cons on this whole thing. Um, one thing that the Cannabis Commission talks about in their, in their, uh, on their website is to look at it sometimes as a, a commerce issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I'm not sitting there saying we're going to make a million dollars a quarter. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're not going to make $200,000 a quarter. We're probably not. Okay? But if we diversify our portfolio just a little bit, be it retail, be it transportation, be it grow, be it research, be it micro businesses, be it whatever it may be with the, that licensors are allowed, mm -hmm then maybe we can grow a little bit as a town economically as well. I think we're doing well, but I think we can do better. Now, when I went through this whole thing, um, I asked a lot of questions when uh, Mr. Patton, uh, the CEO was here, their lawyer was here, uh, the manager of the new medical marijuana dispensary was here. Um, I talked about the town of Southbridge being one of, I believe it's 29 towns in, in Massachusetts that's been identified as being disproportionately uh, or disadvantaged here within the Commonwealth. So I asked that question, how does that benefit us if we were to vote for that or if the town were to vote for that down the road? And one thing is A, veterans, dis disabled, minorities, they all have a stake in it. We all have a stake in it as a town. Again, I go back and forth on it. I just got a phone call today. Now, I wasn't actually gonna bring this up. I got a phone call today uh, from an individual um, that owns a large piece of property here in town and said about a year ago, the town was offered if, they, if the, the ballot had changed or if the vote hadn't even taken place in June of 2017, could they bring in a grow facility, 140,000 square feet grow facility indoors, rehab a facility or an old mill, a building, and they got told no because the town voted it down or it was placed on the ballot by the town council at the time. So there's a lot of other reasons we went into and people can discuss this. Um, quite a bit and they can call me anytime so we could discuss, but I'm, at this point in time, as a chairman of the Planning and Development Committee, my first and foremost thing here is to bring economy back to, or bring a sound economy back to this town. So at this point in time, I'm gonna say I will be voting for this as well. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman? Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Just to, I, I wanna just touch up on something. Um, I didn't, say that the town manager advocated for this, uh, uh, the people seeking to put this on the ballot is asking us as a town for legal advice no, to get it. No, That's not. how no, I take it. That's how I took it. I, I heard you guys talk. Mm -hmm. Councilor Nash, I mean, Councilor Adams, did you say Valley Green Grow came and spoke? I'm sorry? Did no. you say Valley Green Grow no. came and spoke? No, Green Meadows. Green Meadows. Okay, Green Meadows. I apologize. I thought I heard you say Valley Green Grow. Okay. Um, yeah, I still stand. I mean, yes, it's legal in the state of Massachusetts. No one's stopping anybody from smoking their marijuana. Do I want a 140,000 square foot facility dropped in somebody's backyard or on a parcel? No. It smells. It smells very badly. I would rather see a composting station there. That smells very badly. Or something else. I am just, um, 
I'm not going to change my vote. I, I get what you're saying, the economy, we need to drive more business in here. I don't think we're going to get that Colorado gold rush like they did 10 years ago here in Massachusetts because there's just way too many states already legalizing it and it's not going to be as, um, I, I don't know, uh, it, it's just, it's not going to bring in the money that you're thinking that it's going to bring in. That's my opinion and I'm entitled to my opinion and I'm going to stick with my opinion. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Adams? Actually, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Council Steve? Um, just a quick couple of quick questions, comments uh, to respond to what Council Manor is saying. First of all, I don't think that, um, I don't think any of us think that it's going to be a giant gold rush. There's no question about that. Um, you're right, there's a, not only are other states doing it, there's a bunch of other communities that are already doing it. I think what, one, of the, one of the issues that we saw years ago, um, back between, that, between the 2016 and 2017 votes, and some of the subsequent time was some of the confusion over what other what was going on at the, at the state level in terms of le legal the legal process that they were creating because it hadn't been finished yet. Um, we didn't know quite what was going on with other towns and how what might hit them as things go went in the process. But I think we're starting to see if you look at the way some of the other towns are doing it, is that the process seems to be working itself out in such a way that communities can make this work fairly easily, just like other businesses. I mean, we already have, what is it? What, how, how many liquor licenses do we have that are just general liquor, like a dozen or so? Dozens, anyway, of bars and stuff in town. And those have been, I mean, we probably had the same, we probably would have had the same kind of discussion in 1935 when we, shortly after prohibition came into being, or ended, I mean, prohibition ended. And it would have been the same discussion over alcohol then and legalizing bars and, and other establishments that sell alcohol. And I think what we see here today is another opportunity to do it, to do it right. Uh, not everybody will participate. No, nope, I'm sure that's the case. And that's fine. I wouldn't expect it to happen. Um, but I, will, I, think I, I think I need to say just for, for the record that I was one of the people supporting the, the, uh, the campaign to put it on the ballot because I, I was the primary, primary signature gatherer. Um, so I've obviously got strong support for doing this. I don't use it. I think it would be good for our economy. I think it would be good for agricultural uses. Some of the lands that we have in our community have been vacant as far as agriculture goes for generations at this point. And it would be nice to see some of them get used. I know Council Adams mentioned that, grow, that growing facility, which if I'm, not, I'm not mistaken, it's a, an industrial building already that Sorry. exists, right, okay. Um, and. I think if you do those, to, to, to tie that into what Councilor Mann said earlier about the smell, those facilities, if you do them right, they, you shouldn't smell anything. If, you, if they're done right. I can't guarantee some, any individual will do it right. But if they're, not, if they're done right, they shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to smell them outside. Um, but you know, I think that this is one of those, and you mentioned the disadvantaged communities, and I think, I think you're referring to the, the state's program where where they, have special, they give special benefits to the communities that have had economic issues in the past to help them, to help boost their economies, and that's where we can benefit from, I agree as well, with that. So, but to, to kind of go, if I don't mind, to go back to the original issue here, we're really not debating the issue of marijuana in Massachusetts, in, in Massachusetts or South specifically. What we're talking about is trying to get legal advice about what, what the question would need to be to make sense. In, in light of the questions that we've already seen in the past. Um, and I think, do we, I, and I'm question, do we want to discuss that here or do we want to, what is it that we, that those of us who support it want the, uh, our attorney to actually look at? That's my question. Okay. So, all right, hold on. I had Council Manor, then Council Nash, and then Council Adams. Council Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, through, I know you had a question. Through there. you. So um, to Council Steve's point, first of all, this should never be compared to the prohibition because that was like the fastest amendment that was repealed. I mean, it was like a year, and then it was like taken, I mean, that was like, and it was legal then. This isn't even legal on the federal level, and we can get into a whole nother discussion about that, I mean, because there's that huge conflict there, right? So. And then we bring it, bring it to the state. We're learning. It's a, the state can't even get it right. The state cannot even get their own laws right. They, can't, they, they write out these guidelines. They can't even get them right. Trust me. Look at Charlton. Go over to Charlton. See what's happening in Charlton. It's a complete mess. 
So, and then, it, sure, it gets legalized in 2016, right? Everybody's happy. They make all these quick decisions and everything, whatever they do. Now, there's studies coming out, studies that we already knew of. Well, a lot of, most, some people knew of. I can't say a lot or most, okay? That show memory loss in people that smoke marijuana. That, that marijuana causes cancer. So there's all these medical issues coming up now. So do I want to be an advocate for that? No, I don't. I, I, it's just, it's me. It was on the ballot already. Mm -hmm. It was approved. The wording was approved by the state. The state, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the state approved the wording. They gave it back to us. That's what we had to do. We sent things up to the state that are gonna go on the ballot and they look at it and make sure the wording is correct mm -hmm. and they send it back to us and okay, you can put it on the ballot. I mean, if there's something wrong in a petition, if the wording is incorrect in a petition, it goes to, and the state finds that, you, get, you can get 100,000 signatures, they throw it out just because there's a word missing or the word is incorrect or, or something. So the state gave us the wording, approved the wording for each and every question that was on the ballot. It was up to the person to actually read it mm -hmm. and not assume that a yes vote meant medical, I mean, um, recreational marijuana facilities could mm -hmm. be put up or something. Mm -hmm. They needed to read that. Mm -hmm. I'll admit it was confusing, but you have to read it. The state's confusing, period. And that's all. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, I think Councilor Steves pretty much alluded to my, uh, the gist of my point, which was, let's get back on target here, which right. is what should we right. do when it comes to asking the town manager to go get some legal advice? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any better suggestion. I think at this point I'll, I'll, I'll ask to just stop right there and maybe speculate more later. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I, I do want to make an amendment to this and strike out town manager, put town council. That's the way it was originally voted on on the 11th of April okay. to remove. Um, not that I, of course, I'd love to have the town manager in that conversation too as well, but the, what we voted on was for town council, not town manager. Um, and the reason being, um, I say that, is the fact that it is a, such a passionate thing and we also want to make sure as, as, as uh, leaders of this community that we do it correctly. Um, and that everybody has a voice and that everybody within the town council has that voice and, and is heard and, and questions are raised. So I, I was so you're, you're, uh, make a motion to amend. To amend that to go to authorize the town council. Okay. Any further, any discussion on the amendment? Mr. Chairman. Seconded? Council Manor seconded, okay. yes. I seconded. Okay. I think yeah. in, okay. in previous motions I've seen of this nature, don't we ask for the town council chairperson and vice chair rather than the town council be authorized? Through, yeah, town council chair. I mean, if it goes as assumed, I don't chair really like and it vice assumed, chair. I'd rather say vote to authorize the town council chairperson and vice chairperson. All right. So I'd, I'd suggest that the amendment. Do you agree with that amendment? Even. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Are you good with that, council man? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Okay. I, mean, I, was just thinking, if, I was just thinking also if we wanted to do it as a whole council, we could also ask to to bring the, the attorney in and do it in executive session and we can talk about it. Actually, it would be, we could do that in public session too. I, right? I, that would be public session. You know session. what, That's I'm, right. I'm good right. with you guys getting the legal opinion okay. because okay. that I'm is gonna cost us $200 in a row here, yeah. right. okay? Okay, That's fine. all right, okay. I'm good with it. That's fine. All right, any further discussion on the amendment, which is vote to authorize the town council chairperson and vice chair, chair, chairman to seek legal advice related to adult use marijuana, specifically adding that's I'll, just for the amendment, right? Right, right that's the amendment. Right. All those in favor of the amendment? Okay, so now we have the amendment. So now, uh, what questions? Yeah. Ms. Pulowski, you have a John question? Pulowski, 87, Old North Woodstock good. Road. Yeah, I can't hear you. John Pulowski, 87, yeah, North Old Woodstock Road. A reason I'm getting up, uh, about 10 years ago, I was given a tour of some grow facilities in Amsterdam. Uh, and what amazed me is standing right outside the ventilation, one could not smell, it was outside the airport there, mm -hmm. one could not smell the uh, harvest inside, and it was at the peak. You could smell it inside the facility. But the reason you couldn't is there were tenants 
that are sensitive to the smell. At the, and uh, it wasn't that expensive. It was only an additional 2%, I think, but it required uh, electrostatic precipitators, which is really just a fancy word for using electricity, that ozone type. <coughs> uh, the smell we smell before a thunderstorm is a good way of describing it. And that worked remarkably well. Uh, people have good reason. I, myself, I wouldn't want people to have to suffer the smell. I had someone in my neighborhood that was growing the legal amount of uh, plants last year, and it offended a neighbor. And I felt bad about that. You know, it's, there's got to be some way of, you know, maybe the person should grow indoors during the time of year just to be a good neighbor. I'm not sure how that should be resolved. I have, and you can't just take statistics. One can't take statistics once from one or two years and say, oh, that's the way it is. But I've been pleased to see that in such states as Washington, Oregon, and Colorado, and there's other reasons, you have cultural changes, differences from one part of the country to the other. But uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the reduction of uh, opioid-related deaths in the states that have embraced adding marijuana. Uh, I've mentioned before the council before, I was concerned that children that want to, I was kind of, as people know, I was kind of a party animal when I was in the high school age. and. Uh, I could see a kid not being able to get a hold of liquor because a lot of our liquor stores are so good at carting and not being able to get a ride to a, a legal facility and then be possibly attracted to a little crack or will something worse, you know, because there are unfortunately illegal commercial facilities in this town. So we got to look at the whole picture. I can understand the sense of do it this way, draw the line, but when that line is you know, it's just, we've got to look at the whole picture. We have young people in here. We all do, almost all of us do stupid things when we're young. And this is part of the whole picture. It's sad we did lose. That place could have provided a lot of jobs, and there's still possibly an opportunity in the future. We could all actually become friendly to this and uh, possibly attract business. And the last thing I want to say, I, if, if we are going to be concerned about the smells that come out of... Uh, growing facility. Let's also be sensitive to the smells down by the uh, plaza and Big Y, and the plaza the smells will still be coming out of the landfill. It's, let's, uh, these are also, in my opinion, a significantly more unpleasant smell. Okay, thank you for your time, and thank you for serving the town. Thank you, Mr. Plaza. Mr. Town Manager? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And first, I want to thank the council for making the, the amendment change uh, for the council, although I'll say if the, if the council wanted a legal opinion uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. So the, the vote is not absolutely necessary in that respect. But, but I, I'm not going to comment about uh, if I'm for the, the underlying issue or against the underlying issue. I really do think that that's a policy decision and rightfully in the hands of the town council and not the town manager. Um, I, th I think the important thing is, though, defining what it is you're asking legal counsel for. And that's what Councilor Steves was, was, was discussing. I think there's a couple of issues, and, and I'm thinking out loud as we do this, because I haven't had a lot of time being on vacation last week. But I think one of the first questions we need to ask is the timing of this issue, because we're coming up to June in the ballot. I, I think we're assuming to get this on the June ballot. So, no, no. No, so it's not, so we're not looking at that? No. Okay. So, so then the question becomes, I, I, as Councilor Manning was talking about, I think that the wording was a, uh, for the last referendum, was sort of a state template that the state actually put yes. out, and they used uh, as a state template, and that had a variety of different issues, from grow to selling of recreational marijuana. So that template was kind of out there, and I think a lot of communities grabbed onto that template and used it for a referendum process. One of the questions, the, the, the legal, uh, legal representatives are not going to define for you what the questions are, the concept of it, the town council's got to decide exactly what they want, right. and then they can work on how to legally define that legal question, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you, you may want to look at the questions that were put out there already and see right. if you support all of those questions or some of those questions or how you want to reshape those questions for your, your policy decisions, and then the legal uh, representative will put those into legal form for you and ballot form for you. Right. So I think you got, you know, one of the things if, can vote that the chair and vice chair ask questions, but I think you really need to tell them what it is you want them to ask. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're going to have a hard time trying to define that because one counselor may, in fact, be for grow. Another one may, nope, I don't want to grow. I just want to have recreational marijuana sale. So uh, there's a, you know, I don't, 
I don't know exactly how you want to define what you'd like the chair and vice chairman to ask. I think those are real critical questions. So um, uh, just the general ask questions, I'm, I'm not sure how you get there. So what, well, just from my perspective on this whole process, <clears throat> one is, um, and I appreciate Council Adams putting together the, the, the uh, meeting, and we had a resident here uh, very well versed in the charter. We had discussions about the charter and, and how, and I think from my perspective and the legal question that I have, and uh, again, uh, I've stated before, I'm not a proponent of it, mm -hmm. but um, it's the individuals and the towns. My question that I have is to the point that the town did vote in a referendum or, or ballot that said no. So the, my question is, how do we get it back to the ballot if, they, if in fact there's individuals in town and we as a town want to see this um, as a potential for a, an economic benefit? And we've had residents and, and to Council Manor's own point that it was, she admits that it's confusing, right? I'm not putting words in your mouth, you admit that it was confusing. The individual that was here at Council Adams Planning and Development meeting uh, got up and admitted that it was confusing, that it, he, he thought that a vote for uh, no meant yes. And I've heard that over and over again. So to put the issue to bed, as a community, mm -hmm. how best do we go forward? Yes, we have the uh, referendum that we could do, or we have initiative petition that individuals can do, or simply as a council, if we see that the majority of people that we've talked to have said, well, this was a very confusing question, and we were confused. Is it incumbent us, of us as leaders of the community to seek a legal opinion as to how do we go about getting in front of uh, the people for vote? Because I'm not going to sit here as a council and just vote, yep, legalization, because the people have spoken. But how do we get it to um, our residents and our citizens to say, okay, we admit you may have been confused about this. What's the process? Can the council simply put it on a ballot? Because that was already a ballot question. Can we simply say, okay, we're going to put it as a council on the ballot? Or is it, hey, residents, if you really want to see this on, on um, a ballot, you need to go to the initiative referendum. Uh, well, am I correct in that, Council Adams? Yeah, yes, Mr. Right. Chair. I, right. I, I think that's the first question is, legally, can the council, given the fact that it was already an initiative petition to, to do it through the ballot, can the council simply put it on the ballot first? That's question number one, before we even get into what the specific questions are going to be. Am I correct, Council Adams? I think that's correct. what we were talking about. Yes. All right. Council Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, through you. And yes, it was confusing, but if you read the question, it said yes to prohibit. Pro I, I, yes to prohibit. So that's why you had to read the question, because no, I do not want to prohibit. Yes, I. So, and I'm just going to say this any question that the state puts on is very confusing. And there's a booklet that goes out that right. they give you. They, yes will mean this, no will mean that, right? Mm -hmm. So if we were to do this to every confusing question out there, then we'd be constantly putting everything, getting legal advice for this, getting, I mean, it's confusing. Yes, it is, but I, I, you know what, I'm done discussing it. Um, I'm not gonna raise my hand again to discuss anymore or go back I, I, and forth. I, I, I certainly- I'm just, I, I, get, I get what you're saying, and I respect what you're saying, I respect what everybody has set up here, and, but I just do not support it because I get, it should have just been yeah. read. And that's it, I'm done. Okay. Thanks. Uh, who was first? Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Real quick, uh, I do have a question though. Was that given, that those four questions, was that given by the state? Or was it approved by the state? Or was it by a law firm in Boston? They, they were approved by the state. We, brought, we sent them up to the state, didn't we? We had many talks in general government. All right. I'll, I'll Councilor Steve. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Councilor Steve. Okay. Um, as, as I recall, and, you, and you're right, we did talk about this in general government extensively. Um, as I recall, the actual wording, I think it came from, came, came from KP Law if I remember correctly. But it had been bounced through, um, I, think you, I think you were right, it probably had been kind of 
at least quasi approved by the state. It was. Um, but what, what we did is we did something a little bit different from what most of the other state, other towns had done because most towns just took that one general question and just ran with that one question. We specifically broke it out into the four pieces, which was kind of unusual. I don't, honestly don't know of any other town that did that. Um, it, it didn't make any difference because they were all rejected. Um, I mean, in the sense that they were all, they, the, band, the bands passed on all four of them. By that, that's what I meant. Um, and so I think that as far as going forward with a proposed ballot question um, now, I, I don't know, we, could, we certainly need to ask the, the town attorney about whether we would need to do them separately or could do them together. Um, but I think that since they all were, they, the, the vote was the same for all four of them, except in the, the numbers were a little different, but the end, the end result was the same. I don't see any reason why we couldn't just have one joint question again and make it simple and simplify that element of it. Um, but as far as the, the confusion that everybody is aware of that happened back then, I, I do agree with you, Councilor Manna, about the fact that if you read it clearly, uh, you should have known how to vote. I agree with that. Um, but I think that part of the confusion came about because of the fact that that at that time, the ballot, those ballot questions got virtually no publicity. There was almost no debate of, about, around them at all. There was, I mean, we had discussions in, in GenGov about, about putting them on the ballot and that kind of stuff up here, um, but basically any discussion in the public was one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember I was running that year as well, so I, I brought up the issues of when I, when I was talking to people door to door. But, um, on, in general, there were no signs on those questions. There was no organized effort either side of those questions, really, um, which, is, which is a failing of the, of the process that, because you know, a lot of the people were focused on the landfill question. And it was basically the same group that would have, that would have supported those questions too, probably. Um, but it's beside the point now, that was years ago. Um, so I think that seeing this is a way to as, as Jack mentioned, to clarify things, and, and if it goes, which, whichever way it goes, as far as I'm concerned, whichever way this ballot question goes, I'm done. You know, this, this will definitely be the last time I do this ballot question, either way, so. Thank you, Councilor Adams. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to follow up on what I was trying to say, thank you uh, for the information on, on those questions. <laughs> 94G, right. the last section, or um, under E, it'll talk about the questions that you can ask. Uh, or how you can ask them. But um, I would also recommend not just um, what Councilor Steves has said one ballot, but also there's, I believe, seven different categories it falls under now, uh, from micro businesses to transportation to retail and everything else. I think the whole gamut of what we can and cannot do at this point in time, I think, should be into, taken into consideration to the, to the lawyer, to the town lawyer. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Co Go, Go ahead, Councilor Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Where I have just a little bit of trouble right now is in wording, and what I would point out is, as I reread this, I'm reminded that in November of 2016, the vote was regarding adult use, recreational use. The wording we're referring to here does not relate back to the questions that were presented in June of 2017, which were related to cultivation, distribution, testing, and... Retail. You know yeah, retail. retail. Yeah, thank you, and retail. Yeah. Um, so I would wonder if we want to be absolutely clear with what we're voting on here tonight and for the record mm -hmm. we want to reword this or I, I, I'd be happy to recommend okay. that we vote to authorize and I'm not asking to, to move this yet just mm -hmm. for discussion no okay I, my wording would be vote to authorize the town council chair and vice chair to seek legal advice related to um, adult use recreational marijuana specifically adding questions regarding those four items retail sales, distribution, um, cultivation, and testing to the ballot. And I like to the ballot rather than back on the ballot in order for people to vote at a future town election. Recreational. I agree with the re word recreational being involved in there because we already have a medical, well, it wouldn't, well, it wouldn't affect it because we, right. of the, the legalities of that, but I agree with that. and. Um, I think to the point, we would, is there a second on that? Oh, I, want, I didn't move forward. I, and and I think the other issue when you talk about micro sales and all that, that would go under the sale of it anyway. So I, I think that would be a subcategory under sale anyway. Possibly, I'm not sure. But. Mm -hmm. the, the, Mr. Chair, through your mind, um, the reason why I bring those up is the fact that 
um, originally in, in uh, at the, I don't know, at the beginning of 2017, it was one question. Then it went to the subcommittee and only went three times to a subcommittee, so they didn't go very, didn't go to a lot of, of subcommittees about that. So um, then it went to four questions. Mm -hmm. But now we have seven licenses or eight licenses. Uh, I mean, I think we keep it open, not be so specific, um, because it, it could be, do we do micro businesses, something simple, and it has to be under a tier one, and it can only be so many square feet, and it could be, you know, it can yeah. sell here and there, but it, it's limited could, to, could, to full grown. Thank you. Could, let, let's just do this in steps, because we're, we're talking, this is not going to go on the ballot until June, uh, this June anyway. How about the first step is, what is the process that council can do? Is it a ballot? or council can initiate it onto the ballot, right. number one, right. right? And then we can come back and say, okay, this is the process that needs to be done. And then at that point, as a council, we could discuss, okay, how far do we want to go with this to open up? Because it really comes down to the council's ability to amend the zoning bylaw, right? Because we have a zoning bylaw that it's not just the zoning bylaw, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. We, we passed a, a bylaw well, last yeah. February or March. Well, yeah. the bylaws, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. It's in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. right. So we're amending a bylaw, a town bylaw. Repealing it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, we may create a new one. Mm -hmm. So right. I think the first question is, given the fact that the town already said no, what is the logical process? Is it an initiative petition, right. or can the council initiate this on its own to put before the people? then at that point we could come back and say, all right, this is the process that we need to go through, um, and then we could debate what is it that we want to get onto the ballot. Correct? Because we want, we want to know how legally we can do this. That's the first step. We're not looking to put it on the ballot in June. We can take this in incremental steps. So let's just say, okay, council, legal council, what is the process that can do it? Can the council put it on there? And if we can, how far can we go from the prior vote, yes or no? And then we can debate how many at that point. So the legal opinion we have out in scope right now as to what is the process to be able to get it back on the ballot? Is it a council initiative or a, or a, or, or a uh, individual petition by the residents? Right. That's not what our agenda item asks for. I, and I'm sorry. I, the agenda, I think we, we, we amended this to say this. that the chair and the vice chair seek legal opinion to get this back on the ballot, right? Specifically adding adult use questions back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. For the but people to vote at a future town election. I, I, my question is, the first step should be, what is the process to, right. can, what, how, how can you do it? Yeah. That, that's, 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 that's the question, so how is it not on the agenda? Council. It's, it's all part of this. No, Council Nash said it's not on the agenda. I'm asking him to articulate why, where, where, what, where what his belief is. Where I'm hung up, Mr. Chairman, is we're not talking about adult use. Adult use is legal in the state of Massachusetts if it's grown privately on residential property. That is adult use to me. That is what it says in, in the materials that we were presented before we voted on it. It's what – it's that set of wording that, that really catches me here. We don't reference very adequately the – the topics that we're talking about, which are very specific, they are cultivation, distribution, retail sales, and, and mm -hmm. testing. Those were the four items that were presented to the voters. Those are the four items that we discussed when we passed a, a bylaw to prohibit mm -hmm. in this town. Yep. So I, I'm just troubled to say that, I mean, quite frankly, I was ready to call the question five, ten minutes ago, but mm -hmm. it, if, if it's this difficult, maybe it needs to go back to subcommittee for proper wording. Councilman, you had a point first. And now Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I said I wouldn't talk on this, <laughs> and I'm not going to talk to that, but I do agree with Councilor Nash. Just to see advice related to adult use marijuana, that's too, like, it's too open, it's too vague, it's not to what we had discussed a couple years ago. I understand totally what Councilor <laughs> Nash is saying. Um, maybe it doesn't have to be specific to those words, but maybe it could just be in general discuss the um, discuss the, the the four items. Can they go back on the ballot? How yeah. do we? What is the process? I totally understand what Councilor Nash is saying, and I'd like to see that amended too. Um, I support him in that. 
But I don't support the vote. I support him. <laughs> I, I get you. I get you. Council Adams, what was the date of the town vote for that? Uh, for the town? Uh, June 2017. June 2017. I don't remember exactly what date it was. Uh, the general election of 2017. The town, the town, the town, the town election of 2017. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. the yeah. town. Whatever, the town. Uh, Second Tuesday, first, second Tuesday of the month. That was the first time we did well, this. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to limit June 13th and, and maybe right. make okay. this. Thanks. Um, Recreation, this is not also. What's that? Yeah, no, I, yeah. So I'm looking to see maybe vote to authorize the town chairperson and vice chairman to seek legal advice related to recreational doubt use marijuana, the prohibition of re recreational, uh, no, recreational use of marijuana. Specifically, I think again, recreational marijuana. Back on Council Chairman, yeah. Um, I think what we're trying, I think what we're trying to get to is that um, uh, at, uh, authorize the town council chair and vice chair to seek legal advice regarding um, commercial recreational adult use marijuana. Um, no, let me backtrack. Um, regarding the sale. How to how to um, regarding the, the process. Uh, regarding how to put. Um, how to, how, how to have the town revisit the issue of commercial adult use recreational marijuana um, on, the, so, on the town ballot. You know what? Let, let me just do this first. I'm a, I entertain a motion to postpone this to the May 6th where we can come up with a little bit better language that we address all these things. It's not going to, uh, two weeks isn't going to kill us. I, I agree with Council Nash. I understand your scope and I understand yeah. Council Adams' scope. Yeah. Maybe if we just work on the language a little bit. Um, so that we have specific, so we know what we're voting on. Would that, does that make sense? I, no. Move to postpone. Second. We have a motion, motion second. second to postpone. All those in favor of postponing? Um, four, opposed? Two, all right, we'll postpone. May, may I make some of a point of, it's kind of a point of inquiry. Doesn't the council have the authority, and I'm not trying to discourage you seeking legal advice, but don't you have the authority to put this on the ballot, maybe even before, as long as it's done, was it May 10th, that, that, where you could that, do it this year? That is the question. That's why we're trying to seek legal, whether we can or not. Oh, I because, thought it was already not going to be on. No. No, we, it can't be on. It's too late to go onto the June ballot. Oh, I thought it was until the time that we withdraw. No. Because historically in the past, we've... No. Okay. I, I think no. we have a much later deadline than... than it's possible. I can check with yeah, the it is. I, I, I thought it would be yeah. like the same day that up to the time in which a candidate can withdraw after submitting, yeah. I thought, at least from reading this, the Mass General Laws. All right. Well, we'll take okay. this up anyway, next Something because like that. Obviously, right. it needs a little bit of work. Item 14, vote to ratify change order number one to Ludlow Construction Company in the amount of $62,507.34 funded by Mass DEP and Casella under the ACO agreement. Is there a motion? Second. Discussion? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions ahead of the this here for this? I mean, it went through DPW. We talked about it. Um, it was unanimous of those present. So, Heather? You're here, it looks like, you know, I don't want to have you here for nothing, but go ahead. Um, this is for the Berry Corner Road water line project. Okay. This is to cover a couple change orders that came up um, during the last construction season um, and to allow them to continue on to the project. The main one, um, three of them have to do with drainage on the road and trying to uh, basically deal with the drainage during the construction right before winter and one of them has to do with the curb stops and a replacement curb stop that needs to be installed, which is holding progress up at this time, so it really does need to happen sooner than later. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, and Andrew all present. Mr. Both Chairman, oh. shouldn't we do roll call on a contractual, even though it's a change order? Uh, I think mostly change we can if you if you want to do a rent roll. I, I'd prefer a roll call. Okay, roll call, Thank Madam you. Secretary. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Councillor Mana? Yes. Councillor Nash? 
Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. You're next to all present. Vote Thank to you. ratify the first and nail contract in the amount of $33,950 for the repair and permanent for the Hatchet Pond Dam Repair Fund for, should be project number 6456. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Heather? Um, this is for a FY18 capital project that was approved to do some repairs to Hatchet Pond Dam area. Um, this was a dam that had a dam inspection report done. These are the items identified in the dam inspection report. This is the engineering for that, which will result in a contract for construction. And we did get three quotes. They were provided in the packet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Further discussion? I'll go roll call again, please. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Have a good evening. Item 16, 5-102.2, Notice of Tax Delinquency. This is the third and final reading. The first reading being 325.19, the second reading being 4.8.19. Tonight is the third and final reading. Notice of tax delinquency. The tax collector or other municipal official responsible for records of all municipal taxes, assessments, betterments, and other municipal charges, hereinafter referred to as the tax collector, shall annually furnish to each department, board, commission, or division, hereinafter referred to as the license and authority that issues licenses or permits, including renewals and transfers, a list of any person, corporation, or business enterprise, hereinafter referred to as the party, that has neglected or refused to pay any local taxes, fees, assessments, betterments, or other municipal charges, and that such party has not filed in good faith a pendant application for an abatement of such tax or pendant petition before the appellate tax board. This is the third reading. Item 17, vote to ratify amendment to notice of tax delinquency bylaw chapter five, section 102.2, as filed with the town clerk's office dated September 4th, 2014. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Council Manor. This doesn't require a two-thirds vote. I'm just, uh, I, I'm curious, because if, I just want to make sure it doesn't, because uh, then I, I have another question after that. I don't believe so, but. As far as I understand it, only zone, only amending zoning bylaws requires two-thirds. Only I think what? A simple, zoning I think only bylaws. amending zoning bylaws requires two-thirds. Simple Thank majority you. for others. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Motion carries. Council's form. Councilor Daniel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to take this time, since I really didn't say anything during the discussion regarding the, uh, the ballot question agenda item that we had, um, I just want the people to know that um, there was a lot being said here tonight. And um, I didn't want to add to the confusion that seemed to come about as people were wondering what to say, how to say it, when to say it. Um, my sentiment is, is that I'm for the sentiment of having the questions revisited. Um, less than 19% of the people voted on the ballot questions in the second, uh, the second election, less than 19% of the entire town. And there were less than 200 votes separating the yeas and the nays. Whereas the first ballot questions originally there was 58% of the people in town voting. Um, so I feel that I would like to see more than 18% of the people voting on this question once and for all. Um, I voted for the postponement because I believe that since we are showing some bit of confusion, I think it's imperative that we do it right. We do it right the first time and that since we're not in any kind of a rush, that it would be very prudent to take our time and to do it properly and to do it well. And I think that's providing the best service for the townspeople, and that's why I voted that way. Thank you. Thank you. Council Adams? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Council Nash? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll piggyback on Councillor Daniel in regards to the marijuana discussion tonight. Uh, I do apologize. I couldn't make the Planning and Development Subcommittee meeting where this was discussed. Uh, I still do travel for work, so I have some hiccups here and there. but. I am very firm in my support of the notion, but I'm absolutely against doing it in a rush, and we need to get it right every step of the way, because there are those that will contest it, and there are those that will file lawsuits, I have no doubt, we'll get it right. 
when we do it. Um, it's a great time of year. I was able over the weekend to get out to Westville. I want to get to the rail trail hopefully next weekend. Uh, I hope the townsfolk will make use of the good resources that we have for recreation in this community. Appreciate the town manager's remarks tonight about Henry Street. Um, I'm looking forward to getting out and playing handball with Will and Nancy Ortiz again this year. They're going to be putting on their clinic. You'll be hearing more about that from uh, Susie and Recreation at some point, I'm sure. A couple other comments tonight. Uh, I look forward to upcoming budget meetings uh, tomorrow night for P&D and EHS. Um, I made some comments to the town manager and I'm going to keep bringing them up because I'm not happy with some of the things I see in this budget. You expect that now and again when it is budget season, but I, I can't stress strongly enough that when we get to free cash, I am not for putting $300,000 into stabilization. I, I don't see that benchmark as beneficial to the town when we have so many other things we should be doing and when we don't fund OPEB as we have in the past. Um, on a positive note, um, MassDEP recognized the Southbridge Water Department once again. There is no press release as yet, but I know about this because I'm on the web every day digging into water and wastewater. And while I have no conflict because I don't deal with the Southbridge Water Department, I'm proud of that team. Heather, Steve and the crew over there are fantastic. They're always very cordial when they allow us to come in and take a tour, but the service they provide and the quality of product that they put out is fantastic, and it's, it's very nice to see DEP recognizing them. Not for the first time, not for the second time, but it happens year after year, and it's been more than five years without a violation. So that's fantastic. Congratulations, and uh, thank you for the good service. We get good water for the price that we pay in Southbridge. Um, I'll leave it at that tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Council Mayor? I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Council Steves? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, first of all, I just want to point out that last Thursday, um, was the Food Share Radiothon. Um, they raised, uh, before, by as of Saturday, they'd raised a little over $28,700, and more money was supposed to be still coming in. Um, so if you, if you caught it, it may be their last Radiothon, but other stuff is coming down the pike to do other, other ways of raising funds. And you never know, the Radiothon may come back. Um, so if you ever need the services or you, want, or you know people who have been hungry or you've been hungry in the past, and it certainly doesn't hurt to, to get out there and support the organization um, them and there's also the other the, uh, the St. Mary's food pantry as well um, the, uh, the the one that's down there I'm always trying to blank on the name of it but so there's a couple in town if you need help they're out, they're out there um, also um, I got a, a question for you Heather or actually two questions um, one is um, I noticed I noticed driving by um, the Oak Ridge and cemetery entrance and that I remember we talked about months ago about um, putting out re recreating the gates over there I was just wondering where things stand as far as that project goes and also, um, a, a resident asked me about uh, noticing that there are, that you painted arrows regarding the drainage, some, what looks to me like drainage work on Cliff Street. I was just curious what what's actually what you're actually working on down there, if it's you. I'm not sure if it's you or if it's Cliff Street. It looks there's a couple of arrows that recently were painted on the street that I can tell are running from a a catch basin down going down toward the river. It, to me, it looks like it's a drain. It looks like it's some sort of drainage work that may be in process. I was just curious what that was because I was asked about it. So I am not aware of anything directly on Cliff Street, but okay. I know we. I'm not aware of why anything would be directly on Cliff Street. I'll have to look into it, and it might not be us. It okay. might be gas marking something else out. Okay, I guess I, I was wondering that too. I'm also wondering if. Dave... And the answer to your question regarding Oak Ridge is okay. that it is still in the works. Okay. Um, we have the gates back. It's just mm -hmm. timing. We couldn't really get out there to put the foundations in and do the foundation work, which is the next step that needs to be done. Okay. Um, in spring, it might not be until next, until early summer, just trying to get things, all the things that we have to get done. And all this rain is not helping us. Oh, I'm sure. That's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And the last uh, the thing I want to mention was uh, that uh, for those of you who are into drama, the Southwest High drama, drama kids are doing Chicago this weekend. Uh, for tw uh, the 26th and 27th, so uh, you can check it out if you if you like that. Um, and that's all I had. Um, Monday, May 6th, is our next council meeting here at 7 o'clock here in the chambers. Thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Have a good evening.